My name is Carlin Borisenko, and you are listening to the Actively Unwoke podcast. If you appreciate these podcasts and would like to see them continue, please consider supporting my work either through a one-time or monthly donation. I am completely supported by you, the listener. And so if you want these podcasts to continue, then please consider making a donation to help make it possible. You can find out more information over at activelyunwoke.com slash support. So I want to talk today about, well, a topic that I know that some of you are not going to want to hear. But this is one of those instances in which I need to tell you the thing that you need to hear, even though it might not be the thing that you want to hear. And I want to start off with Virginia's Glenn Youngkin. Glenn Youngkin won the governor of Virginia. Basically, he kind of stumbled into it by accident. His opponent was going really heavy in favor of what's going on in the public schools. Glenn Youngkin came out against what's going on in the public schools, specifically critical race theory at that time. And he managed to win enough support from the swing voter moms in Virginia that it propelled him to actually win the governorship, specifically based on his promise and commitment to outlaw critical race theory in the schools. And that was what people voted for. That was the issue that decided that election. While Glenn Youngkin got elected governor and got inaugurated, and on day one, he issued an executive order that he claimed banned critical race theory in the classroom. And I was one of very few people in the anti-woke space to say, Nope, that executive order does not ban the teaching of critical race theory in the classroom. And the reason I knew that is because the executive order looked very, very similar to the divisive concepts bill that was ultimately passed in the state of New Hampshire. And when that bill was sabotaged by Republicans, because it wasn't sabotaged by Democrats, it was sabotaged by Republicans. When the bill in New Hampshire was sabotaged by Republicans, I was screaming to anyone that would listen, this bill is not going to ban critical race theory to being taught. It's not going to ban critical race theory. It's not going to ban critical race theory. It does something. It bans things like the overt teaching that uh, you, you can no longer teach in the classrooms in New Hampshire or in Virginia, for that matter, that white people are inferior or superior to non-white people, that uh, you can't teach overtly discriminatory things. But here is the problem. That's not how critical race theory is taught in the classroom. Every once in a while, you'll find it taught that way in the classroom. But for the most part, critical race theory is taught from the foundational concept that America is a fundamentally racist country, that whiteness was created in America when the first slaves came to America in 1619, which, by the way, that isn't even true. The first slaves came to America in the 1500s in Florida. The 1619 Project likes to overlook that, and they claim that racism and whiteness was created in America with the arrival of the first slave in Virginia. And that was the origin of systemic racism. And that is why America is a fundamentally racist country and why we need. And when we teach that in history class, then we can start teaching things like equity and anti-racism and things like that. Now, the law in New Hampshire, as well as the executive order in Virginia, did nothing to prevent that teaching. It did nothing to prevent the teaching that America is a fundamentally racist country. And that is the basis by which most critical race theory is taught in the classroom. Not all of it, but most of it. And this is what we find when we do things like actually watch videos of what's being taught in the classroom, like actually looking at classroom curriculum. And mostly, most importantly, when we look at teacher training, I have watched a lot of teacher training. These are the professional development courses that teachers go through in order to maintain their licensure, depending on what state they're in, things that they do to continue to learn how to be good teachers. Well, in theory, anyway. And in those teacher training courses, that's how they teach it. That whiteness was created when the first slave came to America in the 1619 Project, and that's what makes its way into the classroom. And that is how they are teaching critical race theory in the classroom. They are not teaching that white people are inherently superior or inferior. They're not teaching that people are different because of their race necessarily. That comes up later. They're teaching it 
with the foundational concept that America is a fundamentally racist country. So when Glenn Youngkin issued this executive order in Virginia and it didn't ban that, I was screaming my head off saying this does not ban the teaching of critical race theory in the classroom because it doesn't ban how they are teaching critical race theory in the classroom. And I was shouted down all over the place by every conservative influencer. Oh, she doesn't know. She has stupid hair. She is but a leftist. Don't li- don't listen to her. Don't listen to that nonsense. Of course, Glenn Youngkin, our hero, has banned critical race theory on day one with this executive order. Well, a couple months later, it came out and conservative influencers were talking about it. It turns out that Glenn Youngkin's executive order did not actually ban the teaching of critical race theory in the classroom because the executive order didn't take into consideration how critical race theory was taught and the people who wrote the executive order, the influencers touting the executive order, none of them understood this because none of them are looking at the way that these things are taught in the classroom. They aren't looking at the teacher training. They aren't looking at the curriculum. What they're doing is listening to talking points on Fox News that are giving them a really different impression of how this stuff is getting into the schools than how it is actually occurring. So there is a very big disconnect between what the leadership on the political right believes is happening in the classroom and what is actually happening in the classroom. And by the way, what's actually happening in the classroom, for my money, is much scarier than what the GOP actually thinks is happening in the classroom. And I say this, by the way, I'm not a Republican. I will never vote Republican again in my life. I did in 2020. I will never do it again, uh, partially because of these issues, partially because of just other issues I have with believing they're exactly the same as the Democrats. I don't, I, I don't adhere to either major political party. So Make no mistake, by me telling you this, I'm not being tribalist for the Democrats, certainly not being tribalist for the Republicans. I think that both of the major political parties are awful and they're playing games with the American people and with their children in order to gain more power and to make more money or whatever it is they want to do. Anyway, I want to be very clear about that. I'm not actually coming from one of the two major sides when I tell you that Republicans and the promises that they make are really inept at actually solving the problem. So that happened, and then it was quickly forgotten because the news moved so quickly that it was just quickly sweeped out and another thing took over people's imaginations. And by the way, critical race theory is still not banned in Virginia, nor is it banned in New Hampshire, even though we do have a ineffectual law that the state isn't even enforcing. That's another story for another day. But I bring this up because Project Veritas is making some waves and they're doing good work. Project Veritas is releasing a series of videos where they're basically finding these school administrators who are overtly saying that they discriminate against conservatives in their hiring practices and will only hire people that they are very sure adhere to a certain political ideology, which of course is wrong and bad. And I am really glad that Project Veritas is getting hidden cameras in those schools and having conversations with those admins and is is airing this to the world. This is something that people need to hear. But I posted or I retweeted. Well, I didn't retweet. I was I'm permanently banned on Twitter. But the uh, the wonderful people running the at actively on woke account on Twitter for me. They retweeted it this morning, one of Project Veritas's videos. And someone responded to it. And what did they do? They they put an article featuring Glenn Youngkin from Zero Hedge, and they said, some state leaders are starting to recognize this and they're doing something about it. And I I just rolled my eyes when I saw it. I was like, oh man, no one told you that Glenn Youngkin didn't actually ban critical race theory in the classroom when every conservative influencer declared that he banned critical race theory. And then I took a look at the article and it's on Zero Hedge. And the headline is, Virginia governor takes stand against secretive gender transition program in public schools. And then I read the article and the article was about, and it is an important thing. And I'm glad this is being brought to the masses that this type of training is going on. Apparently the, the uh, Fairfax County schools in Virginia, which Fairfax County in Virginia, Fairfax County and Loudoun County are two of the epicenters 
of where parents have really risen up to fight back against critical race theory and social emotional learning in the classroom. So there are really there are activist parents in those communities. They're doing a great job. They are a great model to look at for people who are looking at fighting back against these things. So apparently in Fairfax County, Virginia, they're doing a training program called Supporting Gender Expansive and Transgender Youth. And they did this over the summer. And they're tra- they're basically training these teachers and administrators to keep gender transition a secret from their parents, which, by the way, is very common. It is very if you have not side note, if you have not looked at the policies of your school in relation to these topics, in relation to gender identity, make sure you understand what the school policy is, because a lot of them are actually writing into the policy manuals that they don't have to tell parents if students are showing up and presenting as different in schools by different names, different pronouns, things like that. So make sure you know what your school policy is on this. Even just call them and ask them. They have to tell you. You can also FOIA these documents, things like that. But do make sure you know what your school policy is. So in Fairfax County, Virginia, they have these policies around the school being able to keep this stuff secret from parents. And this is basically what this article is about. And then we get down to what Glenn Youngkin is supposedly doing. Because remember, this article, the headline of this article, the thing that parents are going to see if they don't bother to read the full article. The headline says, Virginia governor takes stand against secret, secretive gender transition programs in public schools. So that headline by itself makes it sound like Virginia's governor is doing something about these programs, right? He's taking a stand against these gender transition programs. He's doing something. Well, when we read the article, and this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven paragraphs into the article. So it's not even at the beginning of the article. Seven paragraphs into the article, we get to what the governor's doing. Governor Yunkin noted that at the heart of all these topics is parents. And what I'm continually surprised by is really the approach that would push parents out of any decision that's material in their child's life and to write a regulation for a school that says don't tell parents is just wrong. There is no more mention of anything that Glenn Youngkin has done for the rest of this article. This article with the headline saying, Virginia's governor takes stand. Basically, what this article says is that Glenn Youngkin issued a statement that says it's really not ideal for schools to hide things from parents. That doesn't seem like a good practice to me. That's all he did. This is actually even more ineffective than his executive order on day one, because at least his executive order on day one banned some things tangentially related to critical race theory. It didn't actually ban the teaching of it itself, but it did ban some things that we probably don't want taught in schools. So there was at least some action taken when the poorly written executive order was signed by him on day one. In this, he's not even doing that. In this, all Glenn Youngkin is doing is making a statement that says, this type of training seems like a bad idea. That's all that he's doing. That is all that he has done. But if you don't read seven paragraphs into the article and you just look at the headline that says, Virginia governor takes stand against secretive gender transition programs in public schools. If you just read that headline, you think that Glenn Youngkin has actually, well, done something. And the reason I know that people think that Glenn Youngkin has done something is someone replied to my retweeting Project Veritas. Well, I, of course, didn't retweet it myself, whoever is. The the wonderful people running the Actively Unwoke account on Twitter retweeted it. But someone replied to that uh, retweet saying, state leaders are starting to recognize this. No, Glenn Youngkin hasn't recognized anything. Glenn Youngkin sailed to a campaign victory by saying, I'm going to end indoctrination in public schools. And then he issued an ineffective executive order on day one, which everyone now knows was ineffective, even though they didn't want to admit it at the time. He still has not updated that executive order. So literally nothing has changed. 
and his stand against the secretive gender transition programs being taught to Virginia public high school teachers is, gosh darn it, golly gee, that seems like a really bad idea. And that's all he's done. He made a statement. It wasn't even, I actually replied to, well, I didn't reply. Whoever is running the actively unwoke Twitter account replied. They replied <laughs> that, did you actually read this article? Because it kind of seems like he's just made a strongly worded statement, but I would even amend that now to say that this wasn't even actually a strongly worded statement. It was, gosh darn it, golly gee, this seems like a horrible idea. And then nothing else beyond that. The moral of the story is that in order to win the woke cultural revolution, in order to beat this back, this, this tragedy that we are all stuck in, the time for lip service is over. People actually have to start doing things. You, the person listening to this right now, actually have to start doing things. And one of the bare minimum things that you can do is demand from your elected politicians that they do something, not talk about something, not pay lip service to something, that they actually do something because they are not. They are not. I live in New Hampshire where we do have a divisive concept bill. And two weeks ago, I reported a, a school district to the state that is an open violation of that divisive concept bill. It's literally on their website. They are an open violation of this bill. Has the state done anything? No. No. Because it doesn't matter if the school district on their website is an open and blatant violation of the law. The state has to investigate it. If the state isn't investigating it, that nothing is going to change, nothing will happen. And guess what? We're not talking about Democrats here. We're talking about Republicans. The attorney general in the state of New Hampshire, in theory, is a Republican. The governor, in theory, is a Republican. And they are doing nothing. Really think about that for a second. Schools can literally post on their website that they are in open violation of state law when it comes to the teaching of critical race theory. And nothing will happen to them because the Republican leadership in this state will not enforce the law. In Virginia, Glenn Youngkin campaigned on these issues. He won on these issues and he is still doing nothing to deliver what he promised to the voters. And even then the voters are like, well, he's doing a great job. He made a statement. If you don't demand that your politicians do something, then nothing will ever change. That demand should come from everyone. From everyone. And if you just pat them on the back, as this person on Twitter did, and, and even, even after I pointed out, like, all he did was make a strongly worded statement, this person on Twitter says, you know what? If all I can get is a strongly worded statement, that's good enough for me. Congratulations, you just let the woke left win. Congratulations, you just let them have their way with you. They can do literally whatever they want, and all you want is a strongly worded statement from a politician that's good enough for you when it doesn't stop anything? That's all that's required is a strongly worded statement? We are losing this fight because people refuse to do something. They refuse to demand that their leaders do something. This is why we are losing. This is why the woke left controls every major institution in this country. This is why they control government. This is why they control universities. This is why they control public schooling. This is why they control the news media. This is why they control entertainment. This is why they control the church. They control everything. Because people allowed them to take over. And they said, well, I guess there's nothing more we can do about it than issue a strongly worded statement. 
you let them win. We get what we deserve. We will always get what we deserve. And if all you're doing is allowing your politicians to pay lip service to you and saying, that's enough to earn my vote, strongly worded statement will save the day, that's what you're going to accept from your politicians as an acceptable form of performance to win your vote again, then do not be surprised when you lose and lose and lose and lose and lose. The greatest enemy in all of this is not the woke left. I know it might seem like them because they're driving a lot of the insanity that's going on, but they're not actually the greatest enemy. The greatest enemy that we are facing is an apathetic populace who can articulate on some level that these ideas are wrong. But then they refuse to do anything about it. They refuse to do anything about it. If you want things to change, you actually need to do things. If you want things to change, then the leadership that you elect and give your votes to need to do more than issue a strongly worded memo. And don't think I'm letting the influencers off the hook either. Because the influencers, the media, the blue checks, the pundits, lying to people. Glenn Youngkin banned critical race theory on day one. Isn't he amazing? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Demand better. Demand better. If you don't do it, then don't be surprised when you are lied to and taken advantage of and used. That's what's going on right now. This only stops when average people, just like you, just like every single person listening to this right now, this only stops when average people demand that it stop. And I'll do my best to guide you. I will always tell you the truth, whether you want to hear it or not. I will always tell you the truth you need to hear over the nicety that will make you feel good, but won't actually accomplish anything. But if you don't demand more of the people that are in power, then we are lost. Because as much guidance as I can give you, as much truth as I can give you, none of that matters if people refuse to do anything with it. You have a choice to make. Are you going to continue to support people who are lying to you and issuing a strongly worded memo? Or do you actually care about winning? Do you actually care about fighting back? You know, I don't do this for my health. God knows my health has suffered since I started taking up fighting against the woke. I don't do this for my health. I do this because the voices of people who truly care about this are few and far between. The woke left is a real and legitimate problem. What they are doing in the schools is a real and legitimate problem. And I'm not trying to downplay what they're doing in corporations because that's bad too. But when we're talking about the schools, this is ground zero. This is the epicenter. This is where they are training the future generation of activists, and they are doing it before these kids know how to read. They are teaching your children politics and radical gender ideology and critical race theory and everything I promise you, you don't want them to learn because it's coming out of the legitimately socialist left. That is where this is coming from. And it's going right into the colleges of education. And from the colleges of education, it's going right into the schools in the form of teachers. The schools are the epicenter. They are ground zero. Because the teachers know that if they get your kids hooked before they turn eight years old, it is really, really difficult to get people to unlearn things that they learn earlier in life. And that's why they start teaching them activism in kindergarten. 
and I'm not exaggerating when I say that, I have watched elementary school teacher training programs. They are literally training your children to be activists from the time they enter the public schools, from the very moment they enter it. Kindergarten, pre-K, four or five years old. It's in the teacher training programs. So, are you going to accept a strongly worded statement? Are you going to accept a memo and say, gosh darn it, golly gee, I can't really get any more than that, so that must be good enough. If you do, don't be surprised when you lose. But if you don't want to accept that, then you need to speak up, you need to get in the game, and you need to demand that your leaders do better. Well, that's all I have for right now. If you are looking for some strategies, some things that you can do to fight back, head over to activelyunwoke.com and pick up a copy of my book, Actively Unwoke, The Ultimate Guide for Fighting Back Against the Woke Insanity in Your Life. It is the only book on the market that will give you highly actionable strategies. I have an entire chapter about what to do at work. I have an entire chapter about what to do in the schools. I have an entire chapter about what to do when you want to pass a bill, what you need to do in government. I have an entire chapter about the culture war and lots of other stuff in it as well. But you can pick up your copy, hardcover, Kindle, or audio version over at ActivelyUnwoke.com. That's all I've got for this one, guys. We'll see you soon.